How you doing? Good to see you guys. Huge audience in here. This is the reason I'm having this talk. This industry does not recognize or understand the value of LinkedIn. And it's shocking to me because I talk to dealers all the time. And when I listen to foreign retailers and I talk to them, they understand networking is one of the most important things to grow your business in your local community. And so when I ask retailers, well, how do you do that? Oh, I belong to the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, I belong to the local bartering community in my, in my I go to home shows, I go to small business meetups. That's all really cool. That all takes a lot of time. And I'm gonna tell you that's an extremely inefficient way of meeting people in 2021 and 2022. So today we're gonna to talk about LinkedIn. For anyone who doesn't know who I am, I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at Broadloom. I grew up in the flooring industry like most of you. I'm not a computer geek. Um, my father was an executive at a carpet mill. I worked at Wonder Weave Carpets, World Carpets, Mohawk Carpets, Shaw for 30 days. Um, so I've been around the flooring industry. And in 2011, I started Floor Force uh, with Mark Loberbaum. So I, I know the industry really well, inside and out. And I also know a thing about digital marketing. Obviously, for the last 11 years, that's all I've been focused on. Um, and I've been marketing to you guys, which is a B2B marketing play. But we've also connected with over 100 million consumers just in the last three years using the digital marketing that we use on behalf of our flooring retailers and manufacturers that we work with. So one of the things that has gone on throughout communications is people move from platform to platform, right? In the 1800s, the telephone was invented. And when people really started to understand the power of that, it spread like wildfire. If you guys that know, um, really, in really interesting story about communication, telephone started. They only started in the big cities. But there was a farmer that found out about this technology and he went to the Bells and he said, look, we need this in the rural areas. And they were like, look, we can't. We can't get involved in the rural areas. So he understood, he was, a, he was into physics and he understood what they were doing and he took barbed wire, connected barbed wire and cans and wired up his farm. The efficiencies that that created on that farm were incredible. And he went from farm to farm teaching other farmers how to build their own telephone lines. After 10 years, that network became larger than everything that AT&T had built in the same 10 years. So you can't hold back communication. But it's continued to change, right? We went from the telephone to the radio to TV to film and all of these things continue to change and people adopt and adapt. So social media, I don't think anyone would contend, has completely changed society. Everything. The way we communicate, the way we think, the way we read news, it's really scary in some ways, but it's changed everything. And Facebook obviously is the leader, right? And they're morphed themselves now into meta, which that's going to be really interesting to see what that looks like, what the metaverse is all about. It's odd because I heard about the metaverse about a month ago from my son over here, Walker. And it's interesting now, I'm in business conversations with tons of people, and they're like, what are you guys going to do in the metaverse? And it's shocking, but it's something you have to think about being in the position that we're in. But we're going to talk about LinkedIn today. So... LinkedIn, you guys have been here, if you've been here all week, you kind of saw the grow of people that uh, this company is now, the, the, the technology stack that we built, these are the people that were in it. Well, I can tell you, our, 
our augmented reality company that we have acquired, Freetail, I would not know who they are if it wasn't for LinkedIn. We never would have acquired that company. I never would have met them. It all happened because I was on LinkedIn, which I'm on every single day, probably two, three times a day, going through posts. I only connect myself to people in the flooring industry. If you look up on the screen at my LinkedIn page, I've got 12,143 people following my content. 99% of them in the flooring industry. I doubt there's very few people outside of the flooring industry that care that I'm standing on the Golden Gate Bridge giving a conversation to people about flooring. But that, that's some of the content that I put on LinkedIn. A post like that could get 10,000 views, and it's all flooring people. There's not 10,000 people here. So if I want to share my views with 10,000 people in the flooring industry, this is a great venue, but there's 30 people in this room. I have 12,142 flooring people follow me on LinkedIn. If I wanted to go find a new person to connect with on LinkedIn, I would go into the search bar, and let's just say I wanted to find people that were, I don't know, connected to wool carpeting for whatever reason, manufacturers, maybe they're retailers, whatever it is. I would type in wool carpeting into the search. It would ask me, do you want to find companies? Do you want to find people? Do you want to find posts? I would click on companies, and it would list the most relevant people on LinkedIn based on wool carpet in the world. And then I could say wool carpet Sarasota, Florida, which is where I live, and it would tell me every single person, company, or business that's associated to wool carpeting in this town. So if you're selling floor covering, right, and you're going to networking events to meet other business owners or people that might want to buy flooring, wouldn't you think this would be a great place? You literally can go in here and type in real estate agent, Sarasota, Florida. Every single real estate agent that's in Sarasota, Florida will show up. And you can click one little button, connect, 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 connect. How long would it take you to meet 100 real estate agents in Sarasota, Florida any other way? How many Chamber of Commerce meetings would you have to go to to meet 100 real estate agents in your market? At least, uh, who knows? But that's how you grow an audience. It's that simple. What else can you do on LinkedIn? People look for jobs on LinkedIn. Tons of them. If you look at my, that's my message board on LinkedIn. That's live. I mean, it's, that's actually a screenshot from a couple days ago. But let's see. Tanja Kern is from Floor Trends Magazine. So she reached out to me and asked me where we could meet up here at the show. She did it through LinkedIn. Not an email. She didn't call me. And I instantly told her, let's meet up wherever and that's how we connected. Paul Domini from Bella reached out to me and said, hey, I'll be here. We had a conversation on LinkedIn. Shay Robottom, she's one of the biggest influencers on LinkedIn, teaches small companies how to create content. She and I talk a lot. She's from Florida. But we're connected on LinkedIn, which opened me up, by the way, to a whole giant group of other people in other industries that are doing things similar to Floor Force. And she introduced me to 100 different agencies and business owners that do what I'm doing. Where would I ever have that opportunity in the real world But it was right here at my fingertips? And think I can go through here. Todd's on here. I guess I shared something with Todd that I saw on LinkedIn, and we were having a conversation online. Scott Conrad, somebody that we're talking to about hiring him for our team, he was asking when he could speak to our CTO. You can see in that message. LinkedIn has become the connectivity of the business world, just like Facebook is the connectivity of your friend world. I can tell you guys unequivocally, there's very little that you're going to learn here that's more important than how to connect with people. How to connect with the business people in your community. Every single person who owns a business has two possibilities for you. They need flooring for their business, but they probably need flooring for their home. They probably have employees that need flooring. And if you build a relationship with this person, who are they going to suggest 
that they know, and how are they going to connect you? Oh, let me find their text. I'm going to text them. I'm gonna... Does that ever happen? No. But on LinkedIn, you know how simple it is to say, hey, Marjorie, this is Jim, and connect? It's one second. It takes nothing to do that. So I'm going to tell you, it's an extremely powerful platform. LinkedIn has 740 million users, 55 million businesses, and it's the number one B2B social media site, period. So of all the platforms of people that are actually being paid to market for, floor, for companies going B2B, here it is. These are, this is how the pros prioritize the money that they're going to spend advertising B2B. LinkedIn, number one, it's 89% of where the pros help companies advertise B2B. Twitter's number two, Facebook number three, YouTube, you can see the, you can see the progression. But I think that's probably shocking to you guys. I, I hope it is. Because I can tell you what was shocking to me, and I would have never done this speech if this didn't happen. But I sent out a survey in one of the big Facebook groups with like 4,000 retailers in it. It said, how many of you guys are using LinkedIn to grow your business? And it was like 2%. That is shocking. Literally shocking to me. All the things that you guys do, as hard as you guys work to grow your business, this would be like starving if you were, if you were hungry and you walked into an apple orchard and the apples were all ripe and they were starting here and the tree was full and you're just, no, I'm going to keep walking. To me, that's what LinkedIn is. It's so simple. So HubSpot, which Anthony brought up before, ran a survey. So I'll tell you some really cool, these are real basic things you can do. But they did a survey of where, which traffic from which social media site produced the most leads. It's not even close. LinkedIn blows everybody else away. And how do you, know, how do you quantify that? So what Anthony was talking about, you make content. And in that content, you can put a link to your website, right? So if you went on LinkedIn, and this is just the most simple playbook on the planet Earth. You go on LinkedIn, you say, hey, I'm Marjorie Benson from Port Charlotte, Florida. I'm new in the community. Well, guess what? If you've only connected to people in Port Charlotte or the people around there, it might be relevant. It's definitely relevant to somebody that's looking for floor covering, but there's a lot of other businesses that are always looking to connect with local businesses. That's where you go. And so three people like that post. But those three people own a business. If you go to a Chamber of Commerce event, I can tell you, you might get three business cards. Then you're going to wash those clothes. Those cards are in the washing machine. You never even find those cards. On LinkedIn, that's a permanent connection. At any time you want to go back and go, who did I meet? Oh, wait a minute, it's on LinkedIn. And guess what? There's actually a video of Marjorie going, hey, I'm Marjorie, I'm here. But taking another step forward, and we'll talk about it later, you can actually create a little bit more content to give context to produce value for somebody. You know, if you're in Port Charlotte, and let's just say it got hit by a hurricane, which has happened. Let's just say that happened. Everyone's looking for floor covering. What if Marjorie had had 12,000 connections in that local market on LinkedIn after a hurricane hit, and she let people know she was there for them? You may not advertise for the rest of your life if you were in that position when that actually happened. It doesn't have to be a hurricane. I'm just telling you, everyone's connecting on LinkedIn. So this is really simple, guys. A lot of things that we talk about with technology, I, the feedback I get is, man, you guys all talk about this stuff as it's so freaking easy. This one is. I couldn't think of 45 minutes worth of stuff to say because it's so freaking simple to do this. This is it. Number one, what's really cool about LinkedIn, it allows you to create a company page for your company. 
And you can go on there and take pictures of your store, take pictures of your staff. A really good idea is to take pictures of some of the things that go on in your company besides the work. If you guys have company picnics, if you guys do anything with the, the community as far as charity, share that. And the reason I'm saying that, I told you LinkedIn's a, a place where people go look for jobs. As my wife was saying in the other room, people don't want a job. They want to go to a great company with a great culture. If they wanted a job, they probably would be happy where they were. If they're looking, they're probably not happy. And generally, it's not hard to get a job today. It's hard to find a great company with great people that cares about you and maybe has something to offer outside of the work. So if you share that on LinkedIn, you're doing something that separates yourself from everybody else. So the very first thing you should do is create a company page. Number two, create your personal page. And it connects, the two things are connected. So you're going to make that connection. But now you have these two different places of real estate on LinkedIn. So you're starting to take up a little bit more space. And again, when I was talking about the search bar, when someone, when you do these two things, and someone goes into that search bar and goes flooring, Port Charlotte, you're there in two places. Are you looking for a person? Are you looking for Marjorie? Are you looking for Patty? Are you looking for the store? It's all there. And number two, get off of TikTok for a minute. <laughs> Facebook, whatever you guys do that you, where you're just messing around, spend an hour. If, I, if, if you guys, if I was in your shoes, I'd do this every day, but... Spend an hour a week or a month and go on LinkedIn and start messing around with the search bar and connecting to people that are relevant people in your market. If you did 10 people a day, right, that's 70 people a week, 280 people a month, those are businesses that very possibly have one employee to 10 employees to 20 employees. Exponentially, you're really growing your network. Number four, make your first post. I heard Anthony talking about it before. I don't care if you like to be on camera or not. You own a business, right? And your business is to sell to consumers. People are people. As my wife said, everybody puts their pants on the same way. You decided to sell to consumers, get in front of consumers and say hello. And do think about... The community, I'll tell you what's interesting about all social media. If you think I woke up one day and said, you know what, I'm going to make a video. That is not what happened. I looked at some of the people that have the most views of their videos, Gary Vaynerchuk and some of these people, looked at how, what they were doing, how they were offering um, value to the people that were looking at their videos, and I thought about how can I apply that to flooring, and I started making videos. I made a video in Times Square. I posted it on LinkedIn. It got 442,000 views. So I can tell you, you know how much editing went into that video? Zero. I made that video in the middle of the night. I was exhausted. And I was kind of in the flow of making videos. I'm like, this kind of works. I did that video. I did another video on a Brooklyn Bridge at 4 o'clock in the morning in an Uber, leaving New York, going to Sarasota. And I was just thinking about a comment that, I don't know, it wasn't probably nobody in here, but someone made a comment to me about, man, I'm not from this era. I didn't have technology. Listen, that shit pisses me off, because me either. But guess what? That's where your customer is. So stop talking about it and learn it and do it. Or, or go work for Home Depot. Put an orange apron on and stop talking about it. But if you're in this business and you want to grow your business, understand what your customer is, go there. It's not that hard. It really isn't. I can tell you no one in this room woke up knowing how to ride a bike either. You got on it, you took the first pedal, and you did it. Technology is no different. Every single person that says that to me, I'm like, well, how much time have you spent learning it? None. Well, no one can teach me. Google's got everything that you've ever wanted to learn right there. 
How do you post on LinkedIn? I can promise you there's a thousand, there's a hundred thousand videos of how to make your first LinkedIn post. And LinkedIn has a ton of information on it. Make your first post, and it's going to suck. But every first video sucks. My first video, I can tell you, I probably, I remember on my phone, I, I ruined, like the memory went out because I took it 7,000 times. And then I was like, which one was the best? Somewhere in there. And I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to post it. And I got three views. The next one got 10. The interesting thing about LinkedIn is their algorithm, they don't have enough content. So what's really interesting about it, if you start producing content and you grow your network, they're happy. And the more frequency that you put content on, the higher the algorithm will put, even if your video sucks. So the more content you put, they're like, you know what? This person's putting in the effort to make this platform work, and they're going to push it up. There's a million stories I can tell you about this, guys, but you all have something to say. Your neighbors want to buy from you. But if they don't know who you are, they're not. LinkedIn is the easiest way to grow that network. It's easier than anything. It's easier than Facebook. So do it. And then make that first connection, right? So just start clicking through and talk to somebody. And I know that sounds really weird, but I can tell you if you're a regular on LinkedIn, it's not weird. It's weird. What, it, what is weird is strangers coming out of nowhere connecting with you, and they act like they've been talking to you. Hey, Remember that conversation, I want to get back with you. And I'm like, oh, I don't know that guy. That does happen all the time. Because LinkedIn's so effective that cold callers are now using LinkedIn instead of making a phone call. That's kind of annoying. But I can tell you it is the easiest, most available way for you guys to grow a network. If you were sitting at home doing nothing, if you were watching a football game or whatever you guys do and just sit there and start typing in the search bar, real estate agents, remodelers, custom builders, and put in your city, it's going to say company or people. Connect to company. The company is going to come up. It says they have 13 employees. You can connect to every one of those employees with a click of a button. You now know the owner and everyone that works at that company, and you're connected to them. And as you build that network and you start making content, you're actually talking to them. And if they care, which they're not all going to care, Right? But you are, but there is a bunch of them that will. That's it. It's as simple as that. Like I said, it's too simple. I can't talk about it for 45 minutes because it's not that complicated. And I was just really passionate about this. Everybody in the company is like, dude, I don't know if anyone's going to listen to this. I'm like, I don't care. When I did that poll on Facebook and I found out that the entire flooring industry does not using LinkedIn, I was stunned and felt passionate about this. And I can tell you, that this video, I'm going to put on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook, I'm going to post it every week until I get another poll out into the flooring industry and find out that at least 10% of you are taking advantage of this networking that's free, that's more powerful than anything you're going to do at the Chamber of Commerce, a home show, the bartering thing that you belong to. This is 100 times more effective. So... Your local LinkedIn network needs flooring. Will you be the one supplying it? Because if you're not, I can promise you it's just another way that somebody else is eating your lunch. And as a small business owner, that should not be when it's this easy. There's a lot of barriers to growing your business as a small business, but LinkedIn evens the playing field. And for a local company with a local message, you can eat their lunch if you just show up. So that is it. I hope that inspired you. It is not hard. I promise you, this is not something you need to take a class on. That's it. Thank you. All right, so we have tons of time here. If you have questions, if not, we can all get some cocktails in the lounge. Go ahead. Do you link with your personal account or your business account? So when you go on LinkedIn and you create a business account, it's still you're the person actually driving it. So it's always going to be you. Um, people can go on and connect to your business. 
and not connect to you. But when you're connecting, you should connect to both. Like for me, when I started Floorforce, for instance, and this is before LinkedIn was really a, a great platform, I learned really easy. I could click on Dixie. They have 150 employees, and I just connected to every single one of them. I figured, and I keep putting content out here about how we're helping carpet manufacturers showcase their carpet. There has to be one employee out of that 150, and that's exactly what happened. One of their sales guys reached out to me and goes, man, I've been begging them to go digital. He connected me to the executives of the company. That's how we started the connection, and that's how it works. Like I said, Stuart Bart in the UK posted something about an award he won for augmented reality. I was reading it, connected to him. I was like, hey, Stuart. He was in a pub in England. And we, he asked me to Skype. I don't Skype, I Zoom. I don't think, I don't know. Anyway, we, I Skyped, I downloaded the app. We're Skyping, he's in a pub, and we're talking. And it, Stuart's an amazing guy. His personality won me over. I was like, I'm doing business with this guy one way or another. And he's like, yeah, we built our company in a pub. I'm like, dude, you're so into this company, I'm getting you in one way or another. But that is how we met. And the next day, when he was out of the pub, we were talking. He sent me a link to his augmented reality. Again, all started on LinkedIn. We started connecting. I had him in Sarasota two weeks later, and we acquired their company six months later. I would That never would have happened without LinkedIn. How the heck am I going to meet a guy in a pub building augmented reality, right? But I'm telling you, in your local market, think about that. How many of those stories could you have by now, right? You posted something that you're the flooring expert in Port Charlotte. And a realtor who's got a disaster going on, a flooring disaster, trying to sell a house, but they can't because there's dog poos, or whatever it is, whatever it is on the floor. I don't know why that came in my head. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. But you see what I'm saying? You all of a sudden solve that problem. And guess what? You actually can make a story or a post about that on LinkedIn. Well, six other realtors see that, and you bailed them out. That's just how it happens. I have one more question. Okay. I've been, I've been waiting to ask, ask you this question. I've been dying to ask ever since we signed up. Oh, no. It's about social media in general. Okay. Is that okay to ask it here? Sure. All right. Anything. In well, February, almost. in three, two months, three months, we're going to have Truth Social go up online. It's supposed to take the place of Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Do the same functions. You can expect probably a quarter of America to move there. And if we end up with that, what is the plan for social media shifting if, if, if the other ones you know, aren't effective anymore? Listen, that's, that's what, kind of the point that I was making at the very beginning of this. In my estimation, Facebook won't be around in 10 years. There'll be something else. Yeah. Google could get displaced in two minutes. If Apple came out with a great search engine because every, of the way the landscape is, and if they did privacy better or whatever, listen, it doesn't matter to me. Wherever the consumer is, is where we're going to be. The way Todd built the company that acquired my company, it was an algorithm that allocated marketing funds to wherever the place would be that would produce the best result. And to be honest with you, we can't play favorites based on what I like or what anyone likes. I have to, play, I have to take the money that you give me and produce the best result. That's what you're going to hold me accountable for. Not to say, I only want to be on Bing. I hope you don't do that. Because that would be a mistake. I mean, the way, that, the way we work our company is, and it's really important to know this. A lot of people don't know this. But they're, on a given day, we could be crushing it on Google and getting you leads for $25 a lead. $75 a lead, make it more realistic. $75 a lead. But all of a sudden, Lumber Liquidators is running a 4th of July blowout and they're spending $200 million on flooring ads, those leads are going to go to 300 bucks. But we shift to Bing, and they're not on Bing with that same promotion. I'm now getting, your, I'm getting you the same return on investment from Bing. So whatever platform is producing the best results is where we're going to spend the money, period. We don't care. I honestly don't care. If it ends up to be X, Y, Z, whatever, is where we're going to go on behalf of you guys. That's the way we work. So comment and a question. The, the comment is, thank you, because my attitude has been, does anybody really use this? 
So yeah, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm going to go there. Yes. Man. Number number yeah. two, my question is, um, I get constant uh, requests for friends on LinkedIn connections. Do I connect with all those people? Because some just don't seem relevant. But do I just go ahead and do that connection? So the people that are trying to connect with you, they're people you know or just random strange okay. people? No. Do not connect to random strange people anywhere. And, and no, the business. No, and the reason I say that, because I was alluding to, and I could go back to it. If I went to that message board on LinkedIn, there are some rando people from I don't even know where. And like I said, they're going to try to get you into a conversation. You realize they is not somebody you have. They're cold calling, just randomly trying to talk to you. That's a waste of your time. Um, it pisses me off, so I usually act like I'm interested and then do something really mean to them after that. But um, anyway, but listen, you should connect to any single person that is in a contextual way someone that you would be interested in. But don't, not people you know. Connect to people you know, because they know other people, right? But, and that whole thing builds. But the whole intent or the whole idea that this, of this talk is to get creative in your mind to go, man, I wish we could grow our business. Like I, Steve, back there, you and I had this conversation about, I really want to grow the commercial side of the business. And so really ask yourself, who would be the target customer that you would want to grow your business with? Airports, lawyers, like, I don't know, but you know. And then go on LinkedIn and start typing in in the search bar, lawyer, Sarasota. Every single law firm in Sarasota is going to come up and the people who work there. Connect, 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 connect. That's how it starts. It's that simple. And once you connect, you're connected. It's just super simple. It really is, but it is a, it's a mindset shift. In a, in a way of thinking, but. I already have the personal page, but I don't have the business page, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, as far as content, should I be posting it strictly to the business page if I'm posting videos? And You're better off posting everything personal. Do everything personal. That association is going to be made. Okay. Um, I can tell you, I mean, listen, there's somebody that would disagree with me on this. I'm pretty good at it. We're, we're pretty good at it. I, I wouldn't say that I know everything. There's people that have grown giant companies. Shay Robottom, the girl that I showed up there, does everything with her personal, not with her business. Her business has exploded. Um, I would just tell you, the algorithm works the same. Wherever you're going to do it, though, stay disciplined to that. Your personal is much more pliable um, than your business is because more people will want to connect with you personally for different reasons. Um, I would stick, I, honestly, personal is better. Okay, thank you. I would tell you this, on your company page, post videos, though. I'm not, so think about a different strategy. There's an area on there where you can post videos, but post videos contextually about your company. Why would I want to work for your company? What's so cool about your company? What's different about your company? To a prospective employee, having videos about how you guys contribute to the community, fun things that you guys do, and things like that. Maybe you have a, an employee who's really good on camera of saying, I just love it here. I was, I was doing this before. I changed my career. This has been the best thing that ever. I, I love working here. That's not bad to have on your, on your page. You wouldn't really put that on your personal page and post that on LinkedIn. Um, you could. Um, but you understand what I'm saying? There's, there's a context to those kind of those things. So that was kind of my question is, should we go out and find content or just the silly stuff we make up yeah. better? Fine. So when you share somebody else's post, LinkedIn doesn't give you too much credit for that, right? You can do it, and there's nothing wrong with it. And I can tell you another thing that can really help you on LinkedIn is looking at, th at other people's posts that you see there's 5,000 comments on or 2,000 comments, and it's relevant to something you know about contribute to that conversation, that gets, whoa, R2-D2 over here just, um, that, po that comment actually helps the algorithm say, okay, she's involved in a relevant conversation on LinkedIn. All these things, the more activity they see from you, 
adds more credibility to who you are in the community of whatever the relevant post is and will help. Will help. So again, the more active you are, the better. But that's a, that's a way, and I can tell you a hundred different strategies um, in those threads when there's a, like something with 500 comments. It's, it's a little kind of, it's a, it's a tactic. You could actually make a post in that thread knowing there's now 5,000 people that are talking about something that's relevant to what you want to share. Posting in there, you're going to get 5,000 people looking at that one thing you put. I do it every now and then. Um, so you can put a video in there if you wanted to. I have a couple questions. Okay. Um, first of all, they have a premium. Are you paying for the premium LinkedIn service? Do I personally? I do. Do you recommend that we do? If you're going to do this, it's kind of like a Peloton. Don't do buy right. right. Do it don't, right. Don't Sweat. buy it. If you're not going to do it, do not buy it and sign up for the monthly fee. But I would tell you, yeah, is it worth it? 100%. Okay. I mean, the things that happen when you're on premium. So what's really interesting about us is we use it in recruiting, right? When you have premium, you can actually go onto people's profiles and they don't know you were there. Um, so we, we can look at a lot of things. I can look at whatever I want to look at, a competitors, you know, whatever. They don't know I'm there. You also get just more insights. You also have more opportunities to communicate. But I would tell you, for the average person, you don't need it. When I had 400,000 views on that post, it was not, it was before I had a premium membership. Um, so do I think it's worth it? 100%. And they have levels. Like if you're a recruiter like my wife is, she has something that she pays like five grand for, and she can like read your future like or something with that. But um, yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's in the, you know, Microsoft bought LinkedIn. And I can just tell you the platform is ridiculously powerful. And it's not all the, it's not people posting pictures of cats. It's business people connecting with business people, which is probably should be more important. <laughs> Well, my other comment was, it's somewhat contradictory. You're saying to go on and try and link to a bunch of different people, but yet I'm constantly being spammed, and now I'm getting all kinds of email from people who see my position and are trying to reach me through the company. So now I'm getting emails from all these people to my company email. Right. But you're saying, so I guess I'm a little confused. It's okay for us to try and poach that way, but well, we shouldn't let people do it that here's way Here's the thing. Us. The people that are reaching out to you, are they relevant, or is it just random people? It's people trying to sell me different technologies yeah, I don't, I, and I do, I do and... not recommend whatsoever you go and, hey, do you need flooring? Right. That's whack. Right. No, don't do that. I'm saying connect. Hit the connect button. They're going to see this person who's a business professional in my community just wants to connect. Not sell me a biscuit. That's not what I was mean, and I'm just. I feel like, it, I feel like they are using that as a forum to try and find clients. They are. They're not just trying to connect or create They're a relationship. Not. They're not. So, yeah. But that's. Yeah. No, I, I just. Yeah. It seems somewhat contradictory for us to be connecting with others, connect, but yet when I ignoring say connect, those connections that just come know, to when us. When I say connect, that's not sending anybody an email. It's connect. Just, just the connection. You're going to get a notification right. that says, there's these six people that want to connect. And I look at it, and I'm like, toilet paper salesman, no thank you. Carpet guy, whatever, yes, yes. So you, you can, and that's not uh, obtrusive. Okay. What's obtrusive is you can actually pay LinkedIn to put a message into your message board, and people will turn that message into something that looks like they're actually in a conversation with you. It right. says, hey, remember me? I'm like, wow, what's that? And the next thing you know, you know, you got some guy chasing you down. But I don't recommend that at all. I do tell you that you're going to see a post from a local company that had water damage, or you're going to see a post for someone that said, I just bought a home, we, or we just moved our business to wherever your store is. Who do you guys recommend? Then it is absolutely the right time to say, hey, I'm here for you. John, I don't have a question. I just wanted to hold this. You know, <laughs> what do you send? <laughs> uh, 
Um, okay. How's it feel? <laughs> feel pretty good. <laughs> you have already answered that, but to elaborate a little bit more, is there a protocol that means you're doing too many posts? I know you kind of alluded to it, but uh, what is the reason? Too many mess? posts? Uh, yeah, well, your no, business you, has grown to the point where you cannot control it. No, no. You what I'm saying stop is, stop posting. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're posting on your personal or on your business, is there like one post a day, one post a week, one post a month? Kind if of thing? I was trying to grow my business, I would tell you you should be doing a hundred posts a day. No joke. No joke. If you could stand in front of your target audience and talk contextually about all the reasons that you're different than everybody else and provide value to people that are looking to buy flooring, would you? Or would you rather just find one person at a time and say hello and keep walking around? Like, it's an amazing platform. And again, it's starving for content because a lot of business people are scared to death to make a post. And they don't know what to do. I will tell you the biggest thing that's going on in the flooring industry from a consumer standpoint, and consumers, again, a lot of people say this isn't consumers. Yes, it is. Who owns a business? A person. Who owns a home? Who also owns a business? But the biggest thing that hurts our industry is the unknown. So many people do not know what the actual steps are to go through the process. If you just documented that and say, we just had this homeowner in here. She's a school teacher. She has no time. But let me tell you how we solved her flooring issue. And you went through that. And then you said, we just had a firefighter in here. He only has two days off. He came in. You are now contextually changing. You're, you're focusing this content at people. Every firefighter who saw that would think you're the person. You get it. You understand what I'm going through. Every teacher that saw that, you get it. You did the same thing as, let me tell you how we work with custom home builders. Let me tell you the story of working with ABC Homes, and this is what we did for them. That documentation of how that works in that one segment of the market posted on your LinkedIn, if you've connected with that community of people, you become the expert to every custom home builder, to every firefighter, to every elementary teacher, and you can go on and on and on, right? Who else is doing that? Everyone else just runs around, you want carpet? That is not communication. Yeah, listen, the best, is, it, the best is if you can take a video, put it on your desktop or on your phone, and upload it directly into LinkedIn, because basically then it's a native video that content is looked at as you posted original content. When you post it over from YouTube, you're still going to get a lot of value. You, you just get a little less. The algorithm does not treat that the same as sharing your video from LinkedIn. Yes. That's the best. You don't have to, though, but it's the best. Hey, John. Right here. Yep. When you're creating video content, is there a time frame that you're looking at to keep it within a boundary of attention span to... Did you watch Titanic? No. You did not. Okay, well, let me just, let me, let me say this, because a lot of people, and we have, this, we have this conversation going on within our company at all times. I'm a firm believer, when people say you need a 10 second, a 30 second, a three, that's all BS. How many people sit in this room and watch every episode of... Yellowstone, back to back to back for 12 hours. If it's good content, you will watch it for as long as it lasts. Period. End of story. If it's bad content, you won't watch it. Now, there are certain people that like short with very, 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 the smartest people I know like the short content. I'm not that smart, so I will watch Yellowstone back to back to back for like 12 hours, no problem. But everybody's different, and I can't tell you that one works better than the other, but I am not a believer of everything should be 30 seconds. Just, to me, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Good is good, bad is bad. Anybody else? All right, I cannot wait to see your posts. And please, listen, I have 12,000 connections of flooring-type people on LinkedIn. 
Not many of you are those people. They better be next week. Or it's the last time I'm going to even talk to you guys. <laughs> Thank you. You're, you're trying to connect right now? Well, yeah. Well, that's right. When you follow me, we're connected. Yeah. Thank you, everybody.